wait, wait. Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm gonna go take a look at Manjaro Deepen. Yes, the Deepen spin of Manjaro. A few months ago, back in July, I took a look at Deepen from Deepen Technologies, which is based on the Debian 10, I believe it is. And we had a pretty good experience with it, but I pretty much shied away from any Deepen distros that were arts-based because not too long after the release of 20, Arch was having a lot of trouble with Deepen and the desktop, all kinds of bugs and, and issues. And a lot of distros abandoned it altogether that were arts-based because it was just too much of a headache and they couldn't get uh, stability well enough. But it looks like Manjaro has gone ahead and got their Deepen release back off the shelf. Before you could only get it, I think, uh, using Architect. Now it's right there in the community downloads. And so it looks like that maybe some of those issues have been worked out. So that's good to know. That kind of tells me that Deepen 20 is stabilizing. So that's great. And I'd like to thank Colin Comer. Colin, I got your comment there. Now, I don't know why it didn't get published. For some reason, uh, YouTube didn't publish the comment. However, uh, I did see it in my notifications. So I caught it there and I thought that was really interesting. Manjaro Deepen, that's something I didn't really think about. And uh, with, uh, with the Power Manjaro community, the beauty of Deepen Desktop, I thought that would be a really nice combination. And I really like to check that out. So here I am. Now with that said, coincidentally, last night I was watching a video by DT Derek over at DistroTube and he was saying that Manjaro is using proprietary browser Vivaldi as their default now, which he wasn't too happy about, uh, which is understandable because, you know, having a proprietary default browser in a Linux distro, especially a major one like Manjaro, which should be kind of representing open source principles, is using something proprietary. <laughs> so that was kind of a, a shocker. So then that leaves me in a dilemma. To download or not to download? Proprietary. Hmm. Don't download it. They're using Poo Vivaldi now. A proprietary browser. Yeah, who cares? The browser's free anyway, and the deep and spin is using Firefox, not Vivaldi. It doesn't matter. They're using it in their main distro. They sold out to the man, man. Dump them. Well, look at it this way. Download and support the spins like Deepin that don't have the proprietary browser and avoid those spins that have it. This way, we're sending a message to the devs. It's our way of voting our choice. Uh, well. I hate to admit it, but that makes a lot of sense. Well, that settles it then. I'm going to go ahead and download it. I'm out here at the Manjaro website, and the latest version is 21.1.2. Beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to testing this out. I'm going to go ahead and download it, and then we'll see how this goes. I'll load it in, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am. I'm booted into the deep and live desktop here. From Manjaro and right off the bat this is looking really nice we have our welcome screen here and it actually uh, we don't have that overwhelming Manjaro green that I usually see in the other distros I really like that uh, I think that's refreshing to see a little bit more variance here in the theming and that they mellowed out a little bit on this green so that's kind of cool too i'm liking that already good first impression so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to launch the installer here and so this is a very straightforward installer not really much to do i'm just going to go ahead and hit next i'm going to go with the default here on our time zone and our keyboard settings are all right and then here we're going to just go ahead and erase the disk and then here we'll go ahead and create our username which i like using toadwick so i'll just kind of go with that and then the defaults on everything else is just fine we'll go ahead and give it a password and we'll log in. Actually, let's uh, go ahead and use the same password for the administrator account. I kind of like that. And here we can choose from our office. So our default choices here are no office suite, LibreOffice, and free office. I like the idea that they, they allow you to have no office suite. That's a great choice, actually. So, and then if you wanted to install something else or you just don't use an office suite, you have that choice. Uh, one, I see they have LibreOffice and FreeOffice. FreeOffice is another proprietary software, but it's not default. 
Oh, that's good. And uh, yeah, despite the name, that's kind of ironic, isn't it? Free Office, but it's not really uh, free and open source, but it is free to use, I believe. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and select the free office here. I mean, uh, LibreOffice here. And then we'll go ahead and hit next. And then we'll go ahead and go forward with the install. And so I'll go ahead and install this. And then I'll be right back after the install. Okay, so I'm finished with the install. And I just had to show you this background because that really looks great. Wow, that's so sharp and crisp. That's cool. And so I'm going to go ahead uh, to restart it here. I closed the installer, so... <laughs> But even this is just beautiful. Just uh, such a gorgeous desktop. So impressive right off the bat. Wow. Okay, here we are with our login screen here. So this is looking good. And I'm just going to scooch up here so you can see the other buttons. <laughs> so great. I'm going to go ahead and just get logged in. And now we're getting into our desktop. Great. And it looks like I need to go into my Wi-Fi. Always forget about the Wi-Fi. Oh, well, that's kind of the way it goes, I guess. <laughs> And if I'm lucky, I got the password right the first time. All right. So we're connected with our Wi-Fi. That's cool to know. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scooch back down here a little bit. Kind of make that look better. There we go. All right. Sitting behind the taskbar. So here we are. We're at our welcome screen. And so now we are in our fully installed version of Deepin. So this is nice. And we have our classic welcome screen here, which is good looks like we got some updates available as well including a newer kernel nice better. i'm gonna go ahead and run those updates while we look at other stuff might as well get those started right off the bat so here we got newer version of firefox and firefox seems to be the default not vivaldi so it looks like the community is still adhering to the firefox thing that's good to know and so it looks like gimp is installed by default as well including vlc that's impressive i'm glad to see vlc on there i really like the fact that we have a lot of these on here well actually they're not all installed i still need to install inkscape but i like that these are showing right off the bat so these are the things that I normally would choose anyway. So I would definitely choose these if I was going to kind of just make this a daily driver. I'm going to throw in Inkscape anyways, since we're here. Uh, Blender is another thing I would add. I like that, again, I like that the VLC is there and GNU and Firefox, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hit the updates here and apply those. And these are optional dependencies that you can choose. I guess I can go with that. So now we got our total size here. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And then we'll move onward and upwards. Okay. So let's click on this applications button real quick. And so that's kind of nice. It gives you a, a quick, easy reference to some applications here. I like that. A lot of good suggestions. Very cool. I'm going to jump out of here now. And it looks like we got that same sharp background screen. Excellent. And so now, as you can see by default, we're in fashion mode here on our deep and desktop. Really nice. I'm going to go ahead and right click this if you're not comfortable with the fashion type mode which uh, is kind of Mac like actually kind of have the the Mac look over here um, this is actually the look that I think Windows 11 copied so the Microsoft boys probably saw the deep and desktop and said whoa there we go let's do that Windows users will never know they don't use Linux <laughs> So yes, and then over here we got our launcher and by default it's in the full screen mode and the launcher is really gorgeous. You can also go up here and activate the categories up here in the upper left corner and then that way you can just select internet, music, video. Uh, so it's automatically got these all categorized so you can select that way as well. And it does have a horizontal orientation to it as well. So very cool. Really liking that. And then, of course, if you don't like the full screen, you can come up over here into the upper right corner and hit that. And it'll shrink it down to kind of a more normal looking size. And so, yes, this is kind of the... I don't really use this one very much. I really kind of like the full screen launcher. Uh, however, this is just fine too. And the little shortcuts on the side will open up your file browser here. So you can kind of look at stuff, uh, get easy access to these different areas, to your video, your music, pictures, and so forth. So well, that's pretty nice too. I kind of like those shortcuts there. If we go to all categories, then we can look at our stuff here by category instead. So well, that's also cool. 
I'm just gonna kind of go back to full screen mode because I kind of like that actually personally and I actually like it with the categories too uh, although they're both cool but to me the categories is just a little bit more organized but it's really a matter of taste because without the categories either way you can just simply hit the launcher here and and just search for what you want using the keyboard anyway so not a big deal all right so here's our file browser which really looks gorgeous of course uh wouldn't expect anything less out of deepen <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and close this and i know we got the updater running but i'm just gonna first of all see if htop is installed on here and it is wow impressive so let's see what we got here wow that that's really impressive i mean even with the updater running we're only at a 869 megs that is nice wow so i'm thinking probably you're around 700 maybe 687 i would say without the updater uh just everything idling that's pretty darn impressive i'm i'm liking that too i wasn't expecting that i was thinking that was going to be around a gig maybe a little over because i know in gnome uh it usually sits there however you know kde is pretty lightweight and this is running the kwin this is running kwin so it's kind of kwin based here so yeah i guess uh we have that lightweightness really nice and one thing that appeals to me with deepen and arch together is you got the cutting edgeness of arch the huge selection of anything you can imagine in the repositories and aur that's available to you yet you get the deepen desktop so so far this is looking pretty stable no funny surprises yet so that's great to know and really love the look here and again uh, regarding the bar if you're more comfortable with the traditional look like if you're coming over from windows you can go with efficient mode and then it's going to kind of reorganize the bar to a more traditional look and so now we have our clock and everything over here and uh, our pinned items over here and then of course when we hit this you still have your choice of your launcher and if you really wanted to kind of make it more windowsy we could come back and do that and we're good to go and also we come over to here we have our notifications and then we have right at the very end this little doodad here that'll put you into the desktop so for example if i got something open like the file browser and i want to show desktop right there even just hovering it that's cool i didn't realize you could do that just by hovering i just clicked it to get back to show desktop now when you hover it it'll bring the items back up and then click to leave them so that's really nice uh that's a feature i didn't notice before in deepen so maybe that's kind of new in this version the 21.1.2 i think it is well, that's good to know and out of curiosity i'd kind of like to see what kernel we're running off the top of here so i'm gonna just do a u name hyphen r and we're running 513.13-1 and of course it said there was a new kernel in the update so that's probably gonna update from here and the console is looking really nice uh everything just so sharp really love the theming right off the bad even the default and speaking of theming i'm gonna jump in here into our settings and let's go into personalization the personalization is really nice by default we're in our light theme we also have an auto theme so i'm thinking that maybe in the daytime it's a bright theme and at night it goes dark uh not 100 percent sure how they auto work i never really messed with that uh but i think it probably automatically switches according to probably the time of day however i could be wrong feel free to correct me in the comments <laughs> about that and then we have dark mode and personally i like the dark mode i remember back in the day i wasn't a big fan of dark mode but it's really grown on me over the centuries so i think i'm gonna go with dark mode there and the blue looks really great that's a nice compliment a great contrast there uh and then you got a really rich blue i really like that color too wow and purple that's always amazing with dark themes i would definitely go with that uh yellow orange and uh, kind of a pinkish color and that actually pops really nice too this these buttons here really stand out well and so does the green oh my god this is a tough choice i guess i'd probably just have to use a different color for every day of the week and just rotate all the way through <laughs> uh yeah wow i just don't know maybe i'll go with purple purple is cool so i think i'll go on that then we have our icon theme and the default's really great uh, that's kind of cool too see i like that that's uh uh kind of something spongebob would use probably <laughs> 
but that's kind of neat. However, in the spirit of the review, I guess I should try to stay as close as possible. And actually, I forgot where we were anyway. <laughs> I think it might have been Bloom Dart, but yeah, not really sure there what the default was. Sorry. And then our cursors. So our default cursor is the Bloom. So yeah, it probably was Bloom Dart or Bloom. And really nice cursors here. And since I'm in the dark theme, I can switch that over to Bloom Dark. Uh, wow. That is too cool. Yeah, I like that. I mean, the standard Bloom is a nice contrast with the dark. But if you want to be like totally dark with dark. <laughs> That looks cool. I just really like that. So I think I'm just going to kind of stick with that possibly. Yeah, I'll see. And now let's go ahead and change our background. So I'm going to right click here on the desktop, select wallpaper and screensaver. And let's get a little bit lighter wallpaper in here because we are in a dark theme and I think it'll work better. And so, yeah, we got a not a lot of wallpapers to choose from, uh, but they're nice looking. Oh, that's really sharp. I think that's very cool. Wow. And so is that. That's cool. Uh, the blue cursor kind of drowns in it though. So we'll probably need something a little lighter. The fish. That would have gone good with the sea theme there. <laughs> so yeah, tough call. I think I would probably just grab my own wallpaper ultimately on this anyway. Uh, but I think I probably go with this guy here for now since we're in a dark theme. And I think I'm going to switch back my cursor too because I'm thinking for the video it might be harder for you to see. So I'm going to go back to the stem standard default just in case uh, that was causing issues there in the video because it looks pretty clear to me here but not as clear as this and so on video it could be even worse <laughs> all right so I gotta tell you this is just looking so good I can't stand it this is probably deep and really is I don't think I've seen anything that has beat the beauty of Deepin. The desktop is just incredibly gorgeous. It's really a, a pleasure to work with aesthetically. And with that said, the updates are still coming along. I see it's got HP LIP in there. That's good because I use all HP printers. I've uh, always been a big fan of HP and they're fully compatible with Linux too. That's another reason I like HP is they don't have any issues with browsers. I've had some printers in the past that do not support Linux and so they were pretty much useless to me. <laughs> and so I, I guess since uh, oh, probably the past eight years, maybe longer, I've gone absolutely 100% HP and I've been using HP exclusively probably since 2015 at least. And that's a big reason why is because they will support Linux and they have no problem with it at all. And they're just great quality printers. So onward and upward. Let's just kind of explore what we have installed here by default. And I'm going to just kind of jump back up to the full screen menu here. And let's just start with our categories. Wow. Actually, this is different here. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Let me just double check, make sure I got my theme right. Okay, we're good. This is actually lighter now that we have a dark theme. Before when it was dark, this was light. I mean, before when the theme was light, this was dark. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I'm okay with that, but yeah, it kind of surprised me. And so I'm going to jump back into fashion mode as well. And yeah, it's the transparency. So yeah, that's what I wasn't thinking about. Uh, we had a darker background. And so we have the transparency here setting. And so we were kind of transparent and getting the lighter background. So that's what it is. Okay, I'm good. So by default, we have our internet stuff. And for some reason, our icons have changed since I did change the icon theme. That's kind of interesting. So let me just come back here to our icon theme. And let me just hit something like Papyrus uh, Dark and take a look at our menu again. And yeah, that's weird. Okay, break that down. Let's go in the categories here. And our icons seem fine here in this uh, small menu. So it seemed like the change was with the big menu. So let me jump back in. Ah, there we go. We got them back. Okay, so I think what the deal was is that I changed the icon theme when I was in the small menu and then for some reason it didn't work with the big menu. <laughs> I don't know. However, if you change your icon theme and then you lose all your icons and you don't feel like restarting, I guess the solution would be to just uh, drink that and make it big again. So excellent. Okay. 
And we got our mail client, and I'm not sure what mail client they're using. Uh, I guess that would be a deepened mail client. Fascinating. Okay. Then we have our Firefox browser and hex chat. And then over here in music, we got our music player by default. And I think that's probably the deepened music player. It is music. Okay. So we're running music there and I'm going to go ahead and exit. Personally, I never like the choice where you have to minimize it. <laughs> And we have our movie player, screen capture, voice notes, <laughs> voice notes. I like that. That's kind of cool. So you can leave yourself little voice memos, kind of like you do on the iPhone. You got the little voice feature. And I always kind of like that. And that's kind of nice to see it here. That's very nice. Nice touch. And we have our camera. So if you want to take a picture of yourself or something else, there you go. <laughs> and then our Brazerio test utility, which is kind of standard, the cute stuff when you install cute. And then we have our VLC media player, NPV media player. And then under graphics, we got our image viewer, which is probably our default deepen viewer that we typically see on deepen desktop, I think. And it is. And our document viewer, for PDFs, we got a draw program, which is probably like MS Paint. Nice. Always good to have a basic draw. And then our GIMP, LibreOffice, because we installed that during install. Uh, color Picker, which is great. Xane Scanning, which is a super scanner. And then our Office, so our LibreOffice looks like it all installed just fine. Glad to see that. And then here we got our development category, which uh, pretty much has uh, the basic cute framework in here and a cute designer. Of course, if you're going to do some serious programming in Qt, then you'll probably want to get Qt Creator and that'll give you the whole everything, the whole works, the IDE and the GUI designer and everything else uh, all integrated rather than a separate designer. So there you go. And then system, we have our file manager, which we were just looking at. Terminal, computer. So if we hit that, that'll open us right up into our computer places there. And then our trash bin, control center, system monitor. That's always a good place to go if you want to see what's going on. And beautiful system monitor here too. So we have our applications and this is kind of what's running right now. And our CPU usage and really nice graphical look here. And then we can see our services here. So if you Got a rogue service you want to get rid of you can just pop over here and say cups what do I want with cups that's for printing I never print so you can kill it that'll fix it <laughs> So and then over here we got our other which has our HP UI scan and so yeah anything that it can't really quite classify that's where you want to look it's probably going to be under other but typically I just use a search window for everything so there you go that kind of covers our default apps So really a nice choice of default apps here not too many it's not too bloated uh, not too little. So I think they found a really nice balance with their default apps. I like the color scheming here in the terminal too. That's pretty cool. And it's not so transparent that you can't see what you're typing. In fact, it's completely opaque. And so I think that's kind of refreshing too. It really works well with the dark theme. So I'm liking that. And then down here on the taskbar, our notifications, volume control, and then our network settings here, which I'm running wireless. And then you can close it here by just hitting this little guy. So if you want, don't want it to look so busy and crowded, you can just do that. And then when you want to come over, you can look at them. And our volume by default is set at 50%. And I'm just going to back that off a little bit because that's a little loud for my taste. <laughs> Then we have our onboard keyboard here if you ever have a need for it. And then this is our logout area here if you want to get out. And so beautiful screen. Uh, and of course, I don't want to get out. So I'm just going to click and return. And then we have our clock here and 24 hours by default, which is what I prefer. And when you hit the clock, you get your calendar and the calendar again, gorgeous. And it's big. Uh, a lot of calendars when you click on the clock and other destros are fairly small, but this one's nice and big and it just kind of this kind of looks comfortable. Looks like a real calendar. I like that. And I noticed the purple is kind of just kind of blending in with the buttons there. So, you know, I think I'm just going to open my settings here and maybe just kind of tweak that. And that works a little better with the button. Uh, green is a better contrast. Yellow. So these are kind of things you might want to kind of consider when you're when you're setting your dark theme because that's something I run into a lot is font issues in certain apps. So let's try green here. And the green really kind of works nice here with, with that. 
Then here we can set, set our calendar to weekly and daily or yearly, monthly, which is the default. However, this is pretty nice, especially if you want to schedule things or even daily if you're just like uh, kind of going day by day scheduling and you have a lot of stuff you put in here. This is the place you can do it. And if you come up to your burger menu, you can even change your theme. So maybe you have a dark theme, but you want it with a light theme. Like before, when we had the other color there, purple, if I wanted to just leave it purple overall, I could just switch my theme here. And then, you know, there'd be no issues here with the button and I'd still have my purple theme. So that's another option. You don't have to change your whole color scheme for one little app. <laughs> And that's another thing I like. And then here we right click, hit new event, and then you can just put something in here. So if you want to plan something ahead, maybe you got a dentist appointment on the 30th, you can go over here, hit a new event and say dentist appointment. And it's going to start at one o'clock. Wow. And it's going to go until four o'clock. What? Yes, that's right. They're going to take out all my front top teeth and they're going to take out the bottom teeth and they're going to put the bottom teeth and the top teeth and the top teeth on the bottom. It's going to be a fashion statement. So it's going to take a while. No, okay. Messing with you. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and do that. And then that'll add an event on there. And you've got a little dot that kind of denotes that there's something going on that day. And so that way you can kind of keep track. And here we got our dentist appointment showing up. So in a few days, if you're like, hey, don't I have something going on on Friday? I'm on Wednesday. Let me check. Or Thursday, I mean. And you can go in here and there it is. So really handy. Nice little calendar. It's very cool. Oh, well, yeah, the calendar. It actually is useful beyond just seeing what day it is. <laughs> And so with that, if we go back over here, our updates are still running. And it looks like the kernel that it's going to update to is 5.13.15-1. So oh, excellent. And with that, I'm just going to jump back in here into our settings here. And I don't think I'm using our default. I don't believe that's the default. I'm pretty sure we were running Bloom here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Bloom so we're consistent with our default. And then if I come up here, we have no icons again. So that must be a little quirk in this release of the desktop. Uh, a slight minor bug, but again, the workaround looks like you can just shrink this back down, and go out of it. Maybe that wasn't the workaround. Let's go to all categories. Maybe all categories is the workaround because let's see. Yep. We have it back Then go full screen and there they are. Okay. So the workaround is not shrink and make it big again. It's changing to all categories. <laughs> And that might work here too, actually. That, that would be interesting to find out. So let me just change another one. Go to Breeze and I hit screen cap. Real smooth, Jack. Okay, so switch the icon, go up here. And it looks like that one stayed maybe because it's the same icons theme. So let's go up to Bloom Dark and they're still there. Okay, so now they're surviving. Fascinating. And if I go to Pineapple, the C. Wow, I like that. That's cool, the launcher. Okay, so they're gone. So let's go to Categories again and then Uncategories categories. Yeah, still gone. Let's minimize. So we'll make it small and switch to all categories here. This seems to be the magic place, all categories here. Let's go back and they're back. So yes, that seems to be the official workaround. <laughs> so if you lose your icons, you don't want to restart. Uh, just shrink this, go to all categories and then go back and you're good. All right. And not sure where that came from. That might be related to our update. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit that. And I might have inadvertently launched an app. So yes, moderately interesting. Not sure what I'm in. So let's take a look. Disk utility. Okay, cool. So here we can manage our disks. Probably kind of similar to Windows disk utility. Here we can format if you want. So if you want to go into your home folder and you got a lot of precious memories in there and you just want to format it just uh, because that's the kind of SOB you are, then do it right here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and let the updates finish because I think we covered everything in here. We've gotten through all the different categories and in our settings. Uh, actually, I didn't go through all our settings, but here we have our account settings. And so if we want to go in here and change our avatar to something other than the default, we can do it right here. Or you can put in your own custom avatar as well by hitting the little plus button here. You can also change your password from here, set it to auto login or login without a password. So nice. Those are all very handy items. So there's like a triangle funky 
thingy. That's kind of cool. Looking out off to somewhere. Piano keys. You're a musician. So it looks like, yeah, a lot of nice things to choose from that can fit your personality. A leopard. And then we have our display settings here. And one thing I really noticed that I like about the display settings is it automatically detected my second monitor. I didn't have to sit there and manually change that. So to me, that's really impressive. I'm glad to, to see that that happened. Uh, typically, I have to do that. And so this is rare when I don't. And so I find that extra impressive that it automatically detected my other monitor and switched over for me. So I didn't have to do that. Then our default applications, personalization where is just there. These are our network settings. And so very thorough. Really the Deepin has gotten really great in their settings. I remember back in the Deepin 15 days, you didn't have much to go on with settings. And their settings used to be over on the left hand side of the screen, which was nice. I didn't mind that at all. Uh, but you didn't have a lot that you could do and not a lot in the way of tweaking your desktop either. So it was very limiting uh, back then. And that was a turn off for me, but now it's really gotten to where it is nice to work with. And then here's our clock settings and I like the analog clock there. That's very cool. And here's where you can set your time zone. You can go to 12 hour time if you're more comfortable with that and your different time settings and your format. So this is where you can find your comfortable format. And these are the power settings. So if your screen's too bright, you can mellow it out. You can make it in all your power settings, plugged in settings and so forth when your monitor will suspend and all that uh, or you can just uh, disable it <laughs> and then your mouse settings here so if you need to double check double click speed you want it faster or slower you can do it here and your scrolling speed if you're left-handed just hit that little guy and it'll reverse your buttons on your mouse uh, I had a I had a good friend a long time ago that would he would always turn her mouse upside down uh, because she was left-handed and uh, if she was using Linux, she could have switched it to left-handed. Although I think that's available in Windows too. But for some reason back then, it never occurred to me to, uh, unless I told her and she just didn't want to use it. I can't remember. But yes, you don't have to turn your mouse upside down. You can just flip uh, this left-handed switch here. And then we got the double click test with the little kitty. And I love the animation. That's such a cool uh, test. <laughs> that's really neat. So adds a lot of personality to deepen. Uh, very cool. Then we have our keyboard settings and by default the numeric keypad is on so to me that's like the first priority is that that's on there. Here we can set our language and layout and our keyboard shortcuts which is also important. So if you really using keyboard shortcuts a lot uh, you want to bring up your terminal instantly and so forth especially if you've used window managers a lot. Uh, keyboard shortcuts can really spoil you and so here's the place where you can set those shortcuts or change them uh, depending on what your situation is there. And then we have our system info. Yeah, I guess I didn't like the system info. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's try that again with the sysinfo. Okay, so maybe the sysinfo is uh, not somewhere you want to go. So that could be a minor little bug going on there. It's hard to say unless there's just no sysinfo. Uh, but yeah, nothing that I would lose sleep over. But I suppose if uh, you were going to consider that a, a little bugginess from Arch and Deepen together, that's a pretty minor bug. So, but it does close. Yeah, something to note. Uh, I would keep that in mind, but not really something I would error that I had to get into anyways. Uh, it would bother me more if it was closing, if I had to get into my network settings or display, sound, uh, something that's a little more critical. Uh, so yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and I'm sure that'll probably get fixed in the next update, possibly the update that I'm running right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let this update finish. And then when it's done, I'm going to restart the computer and click that system info button again and see if that goes away. I'm also going to see if that changing the icon theme uh, is solved too. So both those little issues that we ran into might be resolved in these updates that are running right now. So we'll find out. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I just restarted my computer and because the update's completed. So now we'll get the test out. Our two little quirky quirks. And I'm not really holding my breath that it's going to actually work uh, still after uh, a standard update, but you never know. So I'm going to go ahead and hit system info and it still went out. So yeah, not a big deal. Uh, personally, I know what I'm running anyway. So now let's uh, test the icons. So jump back in here, go to personalization, icon theme, and then let's switch, uh, say to the bloom classic. 
maybe bloom dark and then jump up in here and yep still the same so those issues actually were not addressed so again shrink my menu go to categories back make it big again and there we go and another update notification hmm, fascinating so maybe that update was a hallucination yeah so it looks like these didn't update this time that's kind of different and maybe that's something new after the update so that i'm kind of surprised with unless it was like that before and i just didn't notice maybe uh strange okay anyways i'm gonna go back to my c theme here because i really like that that actually might be my new favorite icon theme so we'll go with c and i think i'm gonna change my accent color back to i think it was purple and so let me go here shrink it down all categories Categories. and let's actually go inside a category and then go back and it all looks okay here uh, except there okay so yeah it looks like these guys don't update hmm so you got some icons that do and some that don't and in this none of them do fascinating so here we got our hodgepodge back here again and so just out of curiosity i'm gonna log out and then log back in and let's see if they just kind of come back. So maybe now the real fix is just logging out and logging in <laughs> or restarting. But I'd rather log out and back in than have to restart again. So let's give it a try. So go ahead and log in and we'll pop down here. And there they are. They're back. Okay. So maybe that's another alternative uh, is to just simply log out and log back in if you need to see them updated right away. So yes. I guess that pretty much covers it. So there are a couple of minor, tiny little buggy bugs there uh, using the Arts version, but this Manjaro really looks ideal. And how often do you gotta change your icons anyway? You know, <laughs> and I already know what my system information is. If I was that desperate, I could get in there and use NeoFetch in the terminal. However, so those to me are really a non-worry, a non-source of worry. Uh, that doesn't bother me at all. And so like with any distro, you probably want to use it for a good week or so and just live in it. And that way you can find out any other little quirks that you might have to encounter and whether it's a deal killer or not. So with this, this is something I could probably use on my computer and I might actually install it on uh, one of my computers here and use it because this is really nice and I don't want to just stop now with it <laughs> when this video is over. So I want to keep it. So for me, this is a keeper. I definitely give it a big thumbs up. I love this Manjaro version and I think they really did a wonderful job with the aesthetics and the balance of the applications not too many not too little uh it's all just really nice and it feels very stable no crashes no freeze ups it's very responsive and snappy so i'm liking everything here and those other two minor little quirks i think will get worked out quite soon and again something that would not even bother me personally However, you know, it's always good to note those anyway. And I guess the only thing I would say would probably leave a little bit of room for improvement would be the dark theme and some of the windows. So some of the windows don't always work great. I noticed in the in the updater, uh, the buttons had a dark gray font with uh, black buttons. So they were kind of hard to read as well. So that's something I see a lot in different distros when you use a dark theme. A lot of times the fonts uh, don't always work well with all the different windows that you have open. And so, yes, I guess getting that to, to be a little more universally appealing in a dark mode uh, would be a plus. So that would kind of be my one critique, I think, with the fonts and dark mode. So there you have it. And with that, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.